Hi, Josh. We're back with some more vanilla Minecraft. I have been doing a lot of work off screen on this hill. Like, a lot. I, I think I probably completely revised the way it looked about three times before I settled on this. I'm happy with this instead of just, uh, you know, not angry about it like I was with the, the last two revisions. Uh, but I really like how it turned out now. We've got we've got a good uh, shape over here on this corner. It kind of matches what a lot of the hills over here do. And I'm very, very satisfied with the way this face turned out with the, the really steep grade down. And if we come over to this side, we've got a very asymmetric slope on, on this side. It, it slopes down much more gently over here. And I really, really like the way it looks different on both sides. Let's take a look from the air. I think that this looks much more natural, more like a, a, a vanilla Minecraft way of generating landscape than it did before. And it's it's really hard to see from behind me. There we go. If I turn to the side a little bit, you can get a really good view here from the air. Uh, I've also made a decision about our breeding. So that breeder over there, peeking up over the edge of the hill. Uh, needs to move because that's where I want to put today's project and so I've decided to put it right here so if we come down this way quite a ways we drop conveniently into this water track and this is the water track that we were using previously uh, when we were moving villagers all the way over here to where the library is and then sending them all the way back because we needed to put them in the the Iron Heights apartments. But I'm going to expand this room to be like the holding area. And where we dug down over here in this corner is where I'm going to drop them. And because we're using the top of a hill up here, it's going to be a significantly deeper drop. And so I'm hoping... Yeah, it's, it's more than an entire rocket's worth of lift out of there. And because it's a much deeper hole... I'm hoping that it will have a much more significant distance effect on these guys so they won't think that they fill up after 9 or 10 villagers. You know, they, they won't run out of space as quickly. And also because we're dropping them from the top of that hill all the way down there and all the way over here into a much bigger room over here, I'm really, really hoping that they will just continuously breed as long as they have food. And I will try to keep feeding them food for as long as I can remember. And then once they're over here, basically under the library, because that's that's where this room lets out, we can move some of them up here to this building, we can move some of them over here to this building, and we can start to get them all into place where we need them uh, after we've got a very, very big group of villagers. So I'm going to move them over here. Uh, I'm going to do all of that off camera because nobody needs to see me placing dirt and rails and, and moving villagers. It's going to be a massive pain in the ass, and I'm basically going to construct exactly this, because it is still going to be a temporary villager breeding solution. Uh, I've got a much more permanent solution in mind for sometime after we come back from hiatus, whenever that is. But, but this needs to move, because I want to build stuff right here today. I will get back with you after I've got these guys moved. And we'll go over what we're going to do for today's episode. All right, I have not completely cleaned up my mess over there, but that will come in due time. I have, however, gotten this place set up. Uh, it's it's weirdly taller than, than the one over there. Uh, the reason I say weirdly is because I tore down that one and I put this one back up. And I did not take any additional glass out of storage. I didn't even take all the glass from over there. And somehow I still have over half a stack of glass left. And this place is taller. And I am just at a loss as to how I managed that. Um, but I did decide to just make it a very thin, uh, a one by one square. Uh, just where the baby falls. And uh, I don't know how I made this place taller. I'm still, I'm so confused about this. But uh, I got them in. And I also realized you know, after I had gotten it completely built, that we could have just built it into the ground. <laughs> it could have made it, like, five or six blocks shorter. Whatever. So, anyway, uh, I've still got the, the ladder up the side and, and the drop chute right here to, to drop the bread. And, uh, 
Let's see. Let's see if these guys will make a baby. Hey, that's fantastic news. The baby went straight down. That's great. Now let's go double check that this baby survived. Uh, I have I have revitalized uh, or reutilized. Oh, hello, dead skeleton. Uh, I've reutilized the hole that used to be here before the library was here, and I just I slapped a a trap door here, and I gave myself a little bit of water drop. I dug this place out a tiny bit more. Uh, and I, I moved the water hole, I plugged this hole up, and I plugged up the other end of this so that they won't drift away. Now, as you can see, uh, this baby has already started to drift a little bit because this is how I'm dropping them, just right here. So that's that's the breeding pair up there and their, their fence post. Uh, and they drop right in here. And, and they're just going to drift along this way. And the babies will probably stay right here until they grow up and they get sucked into that water. They'll get pulled into here, and, and they'll just hang out here until we have a use for them. And I can just, you know, take myself over here and, and fly up. And voila, I'm out. So it is a bit of an eyesore up here on the top of this hill. And I hate it. And it's not going to stay there. This is a temporary breeding solution. I'm just hoping to use this to get the villagers that we need for some of these places that we've already got constructed. And we're only going to keep it here until we have our permanent villager breeding solution set up, which we will absolutely have sometime after we come back from hiatus. But for now, this will produce one villager every day cycle, roughly. And it's fine. It's good enough. It's all we need. But now it's time to finish cleaning up my mess over here and at least cover up uh, this drop hole that, that leads to the, the villager trading hole down there. And we'll get to work on a little project that I want to do over here today. Either this or something like this or something more temporary that I keep setting up and then breaking back down over here is how we've been cooking everything that we make. And I have this idea in my head for a smelter array to go over there where the villager breeder used to be. But I'm tired of running up here and grabbing coal ore and breaking it down into coal and filling up all the chests. So I have another idea to power our smelter array with these. But we're going to need a whole lot of kelp to do that. And we're going to need to cook the kelp into dried kelp. And then we're going to need to turn it into kelp blocks. And then we're going to need to put kelp blocks into smelters. So what I'd like to do out here today is have some kind of building that will go from this corner, basically along the road to over here, that will knock kelp off of stalks automatically, send them into a smelting array, and turn it into dried kelp. Now we're going to have to feed all of that dried kelp inside into the basement, where I'm probably going to replace these chests with a chest stack along this wall, where we can pull all of the dried kelp out and very briefly go into the crafting table, turn it into dried kelp blocks, and then put it into an output chest that will feed back outside. Once those dried kelp blocks are fed outside, they will feed the smelting array that is cooking up all of our regular kelp into dried kelp, and also a super smelter where we can feed other items such as cobblestone or stone to be turned into smooth stone or whatever else we want to cook. And it will all feed into some array that's going to be part of the building out here. So we'll have partial building filled with automatic kelp farm and partial building filled with super smelter array. I hope that that was clear. Why don't I just get to work and I can show you as we go. Now, step one is going to be moving all of this stuff because I don't know how much of this space I'm going to need. So I'm thinking maybe I'll move these two stacks of chests out of the way and we'll set this place up. We may even have to block off this door right here so that we can't use that anymore because I don't know how much of this is going to have to be for the automatic input and the water lines and everything. Um, I'm just going to move all of this stuff up to this space where we have completely unused stacks of storage. 
I forgot that this stack right here was for bricks and clay and prismarine stuff. And so I moved all this stuff up here, and then I just sort of added another stack of chests over here. Uh, this place may get more crowded in the future if we need to set up even more chest stacks, because I'm starting to forget how many more things we don't have. But I have made a little bit of clearing progress down here, and now... We've got plenty of room for activities, and I'm going to get that all set up for you first, and then we're going to get to the building outside. I don't have the item lift shoot or the drop shoot set up yet, because I want to make sure that the kelp farm and smelter array are both in place before I try to connect everything. But this is what it's going to look like over here. So I've only got it two chests high, unfortunately, because if I made it three chests high, there would be no room for the water stream to take the kelp along. I am not going to set up item filters back here because it's all going to be kelp. However, at any point, I can come in here and grab everything out of these chests, smelt it into blocks, and then dump it in here. Now, this chest is where I'm going to put all of the dried kelp blocks when I'm done. And like I said, there's nothing connected here. But once it is, it'll pull all of the kelp blocks out and dump them down there and go off into both the kelp cooker and the super smelter. Now back here, the water will come up there and go straight across here. Now this is the perfect length for an eight block water column so that the water will stop right here. But I did put in a sign just in case because I want to avoid any potential disasters. If all of these chests fill up with kelp, in order to prevent items from building up over here on this hopper that I've temporarily removed and lagging out our world, I have installed a little bit of lava down there. So anything that comes past here that can't fit into a chest because all the chests are full will just get burned up, and it'll prevent lag in our world. The way I see it, if I can't get by with 14 double chests of dried kelp to fuel our super smelter, then we don't need to be smelting that much shit. Now, we're only using a few blocks over here at the end of the building, so it does seem like I got a little bit overzealous stripping out all of the storage from down here, but it does sort of fit in with the fact that we don't have any storage over there either, other than those chests that I just used for measurement purposes. Uh, but this, this floor doesn't necessarily need to be for storage. This could be our actual living area. You know, we come in here to sleep and store our shit and... and we can pass through to get to the, the nether portal back there. But all of our storage is on the upper two floors, and we can just use this for our purposes, whatever those may be in the future. And, and this will be purpose number one, getting our kelp all set up for a super smelter. Now I need to plan out this kelp farm and smelter array before we can figure out the building that it's going to go inside of. This will be a masking building, not a cool building that we just happen to put something inside of. The function of the kelp farm and smelter array has to come first. So why don't I get to work on the innards of this structure, and then I'll catch up with you later to explain what I came up with. Please ignore the mess. We endeavor to serve all customers fully while we are under construction. So I'm, I'm working on the, uh, the, the kelp farm and super smelter, and I just wanted to show you what it's actually going to look like in here when we're done. Uh, minus some missing blocks and some visibility to the, the ground below. So I actually, uh, by virtue of, of how I am building these systems, I have to sink the chests down into the ground. It's a little unfortunate, but I did not want to dig into the side of the house and leave things like exposed to the outside, because I thought that that would look really tacky. So this is where we will drop the kelp blocks once we make them. So we'll get the cooked kelp in here, We'll turn it into blocks here, and then we'll drop it into this chest. There will be a hopper minecart that sits below this chest, and a gate that sits right here on this block that I'm poking right now. That'll be a gate, and when we flip this lever, that gate will open and send the hopper minecart off to fuel up all of this, all of the, the entire smelter array, all the furnaces. This chest is where we will drop the raw items that we want to cook up in the smelter. And uh, this will be blocked off right here. This this void right here will be blocked off with uh, smooth stone. And this right here will be a gate. 
So we'll be able to flip the switch to open the gate and send a hopper minecart off. The hopper minecart will sit right here below this piece of chest. And we'll just dump all of our items in. We'll wait until they're all drained out into the hopper minecart. We'll flip this switch. And this will open the gate. And if we get more than five stacks of things that we want to be sent around, uh, we can just leave this open. And the hopper minecart will come back and pick up more and go and deliver. Or, or we can we can flip it to lock the gate again. The hopper minecart will come back after one delivery run and come back and sit under here and refill. But uh, I'm only planning on using 32 furnaces, so it'll only be able to deliver, in theory, half a stack of items at a time, and that's fine. I do not want to make this some kind of insane project. I just want it to be able to cook up, like, half a stack of items at a time. Um, and, you know, given that eventually each furnace could take up to a stack of items um what i'm what i'm thinking is we drop in several stacks of items in here we wait till it fills up and then we flip the switch and the hopper minecart will run off and deliver half a stack come back and get more deliver half a stack come back and get more so forth and so on uh, it's it's not the most efficient system but it's something i designed myself and I didn't want to use another person's YouTube video to just duplicate something that's been done. I just want something for my own purposes, and I wanted to see if I could build something myself. Anyhow, this is where the cooked items will come back. This is not going to be minecart based. This is going to be uh, dropper based. And we're going to have to use almost an entire stack of observers for the stack of droppers to run this back up. And it's going to be real noisy with all the clicking but it works super, super well. Now, I have done literally zero of the building out here for this structure in this world, but oh, Jesus creepers. Bat, you scared me. Don't do that. Okay, what I was saying was that I have done literally zero of the building in survival here, but I have designed the entire thing in creative, and this is roughly the footprint that we're looking at. I wanted to leave a little room for, for you know, grass along the side of the road. Uh, I am going to extend the road. I don't know if I'll do it in this episode, but the road will get extended and go around the corner there eventually. But this is this is the footprint of the building. The building's not going to take up this entire gap, um, but I wanted to leave room for landscaping or or designing, I don't know, outside little patio seating or whatever. But But this is the pit that I have in the creative duplicate world where I do all of my planning. And I just figured I would I would set down a beacon, uh, dig out this entire area down as deep as we need it, and then just get to work. And once we have everything set and everything's built, then I'll, I'll cover it over and make it look proper. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get to work on, on all of the, the kelp farm, the super smelter, the delivery system, everything. And uh, I've got to I've got to dry out some water over here, and I've got to build some water channels, and I've got to build a lot of really weird like serpentine intertwining minecart rails because everything is chaos, and I hate it. But you know it's it's what we've got to do. Um, there is fortunately at least a little bit of of cave down here, so that should save me a little bit of digging time. That's nice. But uh, we're we're gonna get to work. I will I will come back. Once we have everything dug out and at least some of the stuff built, because I want to show you kind of step by step. Step one to any successful Minecraft project. Build a beacon. Step two. Dig a gigantic hole in the ground and refuse to clean up your mess. Step three. Profit. Ooh. Just a joke. It's a hidden broken portal. Exciting, right? But seriously. Gold block. Mmm. And now, you clean up any unwanted water features, light up the floor so that you don't get creepered, and prepare for redstone. And now we summon kelp. And water channels. And furnaces. Oh, what goofy fun we have here. Well, that only took forever. It may have been super quick for you, but it was not super quick for me. Holy shit. Uh, but worth it because it's something that I built myself. It's something that I came up with myself and I'm very proud of it. Let me show you around. As you can see, I have put absolutely zero work into a masking structure. I have an idea. I just need to get to it. And it's, it's going to take me a minute. 
uh, because this seriously took me all day. We built up two layers of kelp farm. They're just short little kelp farm. They can grow three tall, or, you know, one of them can grow three tall, and then everything that's too tall around it gets punched. Um, and it all gets... Hello, creeper. I see you in there. I, I'm going to have to do some serious work on making sure that this place is safe. Uh, anyway, all of the kelp falls against these glass panes, falls into this water track, and then comes around here. This loop is to facilitate centering the kelp with that pane of glass that fortunately can be waterlogged. It runs along here and falls into this hopper minecart, which, in theory, evenly distributes kelp among those four hoppers. In practice, it does not, but it does distribute kelp to all four hoppers, just, just not evenly. Now, this is where the kelp is going to get cooked up. And we'll come down here, and uh, if, uh, I, will, I will start this system off with some dried kelp blocks. And, uh, ooh, are they all full now? Hell yeah, they are. How are the hoppers looking? Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, jeez. It, uh, it might be time to get started on cooking. It will probably be running much more frequently than this array, because we're only going to use this when we need it. This is going to get cooked pretty consistently to keep the kelp from overloading and, and just, you know, lagging out our world. And that's something that I am going to have to keep track of. So that's... I, I may have to install an off switch on the kelp farm. <laughs> so, so that's something that I will investigate in the future. But for now, we're just going to cook up all the kelp. The kelp, once cooked, will drop into these hoppers, drop into these droppers, and whenever there's something in the dropper, this activates and pulses it out, and it gets spit into this water channel. Oh, fuck you! Fucking creeper! As I was saying, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do some mob proofing around here because it is dangerous. It is very, very, very dangerous. And uh, I'm gonna have to be real careful when I'm showing you around. Okay, so the cooked kelp gets pulsed out of these droppers by this setup, which just reads the dropper state, feeds a redstone signal into this sticky piston, which pushes an observer up against another observer so that their faces are touching, which means they're constantly updating each other, creating a pretty quick clock. And that pulses this dispenser as long as there's something in it. Now, because only one item can feed out of a hopper at a time, um, this is not going to fill up. You know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to activate this, it's going to get pulsed out, and it's going to deactivate as the next thing drops in. So it's just going to be constant shifting and a lot of noise, but... But it works, and that's all I really cared about. The dried kelp gets spit into this water channel right here, which feeds around to, let me see if I can get there, a water elevator that leads up to here. And all of the dried kelp will get dropped off in these chests. Once we have a load of dried kelp, we grab it all out of here, we put it in the crafting table, we make dried kelp blocks, and then we put it here. When we are ready with a whole bunch of dried kelp blocks, we flip this switch, which opens that gate right there, which sends this cart off. Let me get back down there and I'll show you a little closer. I, I have yet to repair the house. It's still very much under construction. So here's the fuel input chest and here's the switch that activates this gate. And that cart gets sent off and it goes around the kelp cooker first and then the rest of the super smelter array. And it's constantly powered, so it's moving real fast. Which means it's, in theory, only going to drop off one dried kelp block per furnace. It's moving around nice and quick, and it should just drop off one kelp block at a time. Which means all of these furnaces will get their kelp blocks. All of these furnaces will be able to maintain their fires to keep cooking stuff. And it travels around pretty quick, so it can, it can make another circuit before one kelp block burns out. So it can drop off the next kelp block before each furnace runs out of fuel. And that is one of the nice things about having a smaller setup like this, is that it's a pretty short circuit. Now once all of the furnaces have their fuel, this is our raw item sending chest. So I can just flip this switch, and it sends out another cart that goes on that lower track right there. There it goes, and it just whips right along the top of this array. And once again, it's nice and quick, it should be dropping off one item at a time, 
And if I just leave it going, I think it will travel just fast enough to drop off another item. I'm not sure. We're probably going to be wasting fuel, but because we have endless amounts of kelp now, I'm not terribly worried about that. I'm not at all fussed about wasting fuel at this point. So we'll be able to drop off lots and lots of items. And all of those items will come into this last chest, which is fed by, as you can see, a dropper and observer array, just like we used over in Iron Heights. And I used some red signs and some glow squid ink, since we have an abundant supply of glow squid ink, to, uh, to make the signs stand out a little bit. I think it was kind of nice. So I'm going to get to work on the building that's going to go around that, and I will catch up with you when it's done. All right, now I'm going to have to ask you to use your imagination because the road is not uh, not extended. And, and so this isn't super going to look like it's actually on a road. But I promise I will get that done sometime after this episode. I am actually going to put a lot of work into the road network around here and planning out where other buildings are going to go. But for now, welcome to Kelp Mart. I, I really like how this building turned out. Uh, I There are some grocery stores around the area here that have something similar to this structure. You know, they've got the they've got the the base building and like these super ostentatious like weird corner bits and and a big entrance and uh you know some like some kind of barrier that usually is kind of decorated to keep like the carts in and uh you know just a a big fancy opening and uh you can, you can get a good view in here into the kelp farm. I wanted to leave it a little bit open so you could see what was going on down here. And, uh, you know, you got a, a little bit of an arch to walk into. Some fancy pillars because you know, get, you're killing yourself. You're, why are you killing yourself? Why would you do this? I'm trying to record. Come on, man. Have some decency. Good lord. Shameful displays. Anyhow, uh, I, I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to make it look like there was a, a big fancy entrance and like this, like, oh, it's getting dark. Hang on. Get, give me, give me a second. Sorry about that. Uh, it, it seems like the universe is against us right now. Uh, I just, I just wanted to show you the damn building. Um, I wanted to go with the plain white uh, uh, terracotta because, you know, it's, it's very, it's very, very bare, plain, uh, not at all fancy, but the shape of the building and the shape of the entry and, and the, the flowering bushes on top of the fences here and the, the pillars, the quartz pillars, all gives it this kind of air of like faux ostentatious uh, presentation. You know, we've got like some, some fancy uh, awnings over the cart return. Like it's supposed to feel kind of like fake fancy. And I hope that that kind of came through in it, um, because that was that was the intent anyway. It's just got like kind of multiple confusing roof lines and and some like just kind of jammed together shapes and windows that don't quite make a lot of sense, but like they're supposed to give the inside some more extra light. Um, and and I just I I wanted this to feel like like your shitty neighborhood grocery store. And so I hope that that kind of bled through without actually making it too gaudy or, you know, an eyesore. Um, and I, the eyesore bit was the thing that I was, I think, the most concerned about. But it's all done now. And uh, there's no actual entrance to the, the below area. So if we ever want to get down there, we're going to have to probably dig our way down. I might make an entrance to it at some point because I feel like every once in a while I might need to come down here and uh, for instance check on the uh check on the the oh jesus well i'm going to have to clean that up now you know what i am just going to say my goodbyes for now and uh because i know that this redstone's going to be a nightmare to clean up so uh this this will be the final episode and we'll go on hiatus uh this series will be back at some point I don't know when, but there's a lot of other stuff that I want to do, and I simply don't have the time to do it. 
when I'm playing Minecraft full time. Um, so I'm really not looking forward to cleaning this up. I'm fucking creepers. I'll talk to you soon, brother. I miss you.